Hello and welcome to Devtoberfest. This is the month long activity for all of you out there who are interested in building solutions using SAP technologies. Let me remind you Wednesday is data and analytics day. And this is already week three <clears throat> of this, as I mentioned, month long uh, uh, event. Uh, we uh, kick this off, uh, if we are talking about data and analytics uh, topic specifically, we kick this off with two sessions about machine learning uh, in HANA Cloud and in Data Warehousing Cloud. Uh, then the second week was about SAP Analytics Cloud, and we showed how to do the bidirectional integration between uh, between the uh, SAP Analytics Cloud and uh, SAP Data Warehouse Cloud, uh, as well as we had an external speaker uh, from Mindtree, James Barlow, who showed how to use some simple scripting uh, to enhance analytic applications. And now we are in week three, kicking this off with the session of on why you should know more about SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. And then in the afternoon, my time, it might be morning your time or late evening your time. Uh, Dennis also will have a session about innovating your IT landscape with SAP Data Warehouse Cloud, SAP BW Bridge. Uh, as a reminder, uh, we are streaming this live, but as well, the recording will be available for uh, all of you. So no matter if you are watching this live or if you are watching the stream, I would like to remind you as well that there is a validation question. Uh, I will share the link in the chat in a few minutes as well uh, that would help you to validate the knowledge that you acquired during the session, but as well to get some points in SAP uh, or in, in the Oktoberfest uh, contest that we are running uh, for you. And then just going back to the uh, schedule of this month of data and analytics track. Uh, the next Wednesday will be about data intelligence. If you are uh, looking for uh, some other topics, then let me just quickly remind you that Monday is ABAP day, Tuesday is user interface, user experience day. Uh, you are in Wednesday data and analytics day. Thursday is low code, no code. And Friday is cloud native, but as well, usually we have some fun activities for you on Friday as well. And if I'm not mistaken, this Friday will be gaming night. So all of you gamers, check this out and uh, join us. And with that, I would like to hand over the uh, this stream to uh, KP and uh, KP, you can share your screen and take it away. Yeah, let me just do that. <clears throat> so it should be showing in a second. So hello and welcome also from my side. My name is KP. Uh, I'm working on the product management team for Data Warehouse Cloud and we'll uh, guide you through the session today. If you have any questions, feel free to use the chat. I know Vitaly is monitoring it. If there's something urgent, he will stop me. And um, I guess in the meantime, you could see the screen. And um, so let me quickly uh, show you what I'm going to talk about today. So we have a small agenda here. Uh, at the beginning, uh, uh, I want to give you an overview, an introduction of Data Warehouse Cloud um, and also show you the system live uh, with the first demo part, how it looks like, how it feels, how we can navigate in the various areas and uh, also have a look at spaces and then go in the third part a little deeper on the modeling and consumption areas. And I will also have a demo at the end for those parts. Um, so we will certainly have some time for Q&A at the end. And um, so, but as I mentioned, feel free to use the chat here 
And um, so without further ado, let's directly jump into it. Uh, if we look at our current portfolio in the data and analytics area, so you see we are part of the business technology platform. And I'm sure if you followed uh, the Wednesday sessions the last few weeks on the Devtoberfest, you've probably seen this slide uh, already. Um, Data Warehouse Cloud, as you see here, is at the center of the uh, data and analytics solutions. So from a technology perspective, we're even using um, HANA Cloud underneath. So that's our persistency layer. That's the database, if you will. We're using uh, underneath Data Warehouse Cloud. We have a very tight integration with Data Intelligence Cloud. We're also reusing some of the components, Data Intelligence Cloud brings to the business technology platform. And then on top of it, uh, our premier um, analytics and reporting solution is Sub Analytics Cloud, where we also have a quite tight integration uh, into it. And um, so that's from an overview perspective where we stand in, in our portfolio. So we are really at the center there. And uh, so having a look at Data Warehouse Cloud, um, what is it about, right? So as the name says, it's a data warehousing solution in the cloud. It is a software as a service solution. So everything will be managed from SAP. So the database is managed by us. We take care of all the updates which get into your system on a bi-weekly basis. So every two weeks, we bring new features, updated functionality into the landscape. So we have a very high frequency on uh, innovations here. So with usually around 24, 25 releases a year. And um, if you look at data warehousing in general, of course, you expect that we have security there, that we have data integration capabilities there, capabilities for transformation. Uh, we also do have, and that's a very interesting one, um, capabilities for data federation. So having virtual access to data sitting in external systems. I will show that to you in the system later on. We have hybrid capabilities. What do we need, mean by hybrid? So a lot of our customers are not starting greenfields. They already have existing systems, existing data marts, data warehouses. Might it be from SAP where we have a quite big installed base on the business warehouse solution, right? And these systems can be run in a hybrid mode also with Data Warehouse Cloud that you run them side by side. Um, without a huge migration project, you can gradually move stuff over. We have help there. And uh, I think Dennis uh, in the afternoon session will go a little more in detail on the BW bridge and those hybrid scenarios. So stay tuned for the afternoon session there. And then of course we have next to Federation also persistency in Data Warehouse Cloud. So the more traditional uh, data warehousing approach where you move data into the system and then operate on it. What we're offering in addition to those more traditional capabilities for data warehouses is a quite flexible and innovative concept of spaces. I will also show that to you in the system and have a slide later on where I explain what it is about and how you can make use of it. We have um, no code modeling environments where you really can co uh, go in and use graphical user interface. Uh, without having to code in SQL uh, there. If you like to code, of course, we also have capabilities there. I will also show you that um, conceptually as well as in the system, how that works. And then we have specifically targeted for uh, non-technical users, a business layer, with, which is like an abstraction layer of the semantics uh, um, where you can flexibly uh, connect data sets underneath and uh, have a stable layer towards your reporting and analytics layer. We have a catalog part in there, which will also be extended next year. So stay tuned. That's a cool new uh, feature, which we will uh, extend next year. And openness, and I will also show you that. So if you worked with SAP Business Warehouse in the past, right? It was usually known as a very closed system. And uh, we tried to change this now with Data Warehouse Cloud. We started from day one with 
open connectivity on various layers. And I will also show you that in the live demo later on, how we can connect easily external, um, external tooling to that. So why should you be interested in it, right? So uh, we really take that self-service uh, notion, which has been out there in the analytics and reporting community for I think more than 10 years now, and also provide these easy to use interfaces uh, in the modeling area. So that's where we really go further also with the spaces concept where we are able to share data in a controlled way um, between different units, between centrally managed areas by IT with line of business areas where they can extend and mix in their own data sets uh, without having to export import all the time. So that's a quite new uh, approach what we're using here. Also another strength of what we have is uh, yeah, the speed of how you can uh, connect uh, other cloud applications, for example, right? So we have a quite broad set of connectors already, which is also being extended uh, uh, over time here and uh, where you could now easily onboard additional cloud apps. I mentioned here a few from from our side, like success vectors, field glass, but there's also like open connectors out there, which you can use uh, to make uh, connectivity for like Salesforce, Workday and other systems, right? I will also show you that a little bit in the demo part, uh, how, how you can set that up. And also very interesting uh, area uh, is the integration with machine learning technologies, right? So we can make, can use data warehouse cloud to allow data cent, uh, scientists, for example, accessing SAP data in a very simple way, in a very quick way with the tooling they use. And I also have a scenario here, which I can show you how that works with data warehouse cloud. There has been a session, I think that was in the first week, Vitaly, um, early in October by my colleague Andreas Forster, who was focusing on this part more. I have the very same example here with me uh, to show it to you for everyone who hasn't been there with Andreas session uh, where he went into more details on the machine learning parts and how that's uh, uh, all working out. So very cool integration here with the machine learning technologies. And last but not least, uh, every customer usually has one or even multiple hyperscaler uh, solutions in place, right? And we can really uh, connect with them uh, in various ways. And uh, with a lot of these hyperscalers, we have connectivities um, depending on the solution. We can even federate data from there. And uh, so uh, that's also now another cool feature because you can in data warehouse cloud combine those data sets which might come from different uh, sources right and uh, combine your sap data with cloud apps with hyperscaler data you might have and have a model uh, on top of it bringing it all together for your analytics and even do machine learning on top of it <clears throat> So if we look at Data Warehouse Cloud uh, from a component perspective here, and uh, if we start at the bottom, everything starts with data, right? So we have to have connectivity. I was already talking about it. And we have APIs uh, on all levels of the solution. So we have APIs on the connectivity level that we can also connect with other toolings which can provide data. Uh, external tools sitting outside of Data Warehouse Cloud. We also have APIs on the other end. So for front-end toolings, we use uh, various APIs or offer them um, that you can connect uh, next to the uh, Sub Analytics Cloud, also other tooling there. And uh, also for the uh, system itself, we use a command line interface, which we provide, which is also extended over time, uh, where you can use automation tools, for example, to uh, create models in an automated fashion to assign users to spaces and it, these kind of things. So the API is really taking, uh, are available on various layers here. 
Then we have the spaces concept, as I mentioned, and the data sharing capability. So avoiding traditional export import of data sets and moving data around, keeping it up to date, etc. Uh, this is really uh, a cool feature here. Then we introduced earlier in the year, the so-called data marketplace uh, within uh, Data Warehouse Cloud. That's uh, a marketplace where external data providers can share data and you can consume it. Some of those data products, as we call it, are for free. Others um, have a price tag attached to it. And then you pay the vendor the certain amount of money to be able to use it. And uh, this is also going to be extended uh, over time here with more and more functionality. The core piece of Data Warehouse Cloud is really about the modeling area. So where the data layer comes in uh, with a rich set of features and functionalities, how you can uh, model data, how you can make semantically use of all the semantics which come out of SAP source systems, right? So that's being reused in our system. So not like with, with other um, uh, systems where you lose the semantics when you export the data because then it's just a flat table somewhere without uh, the knowledge on, on what these columns mean and how they relate to each other. That's preserved in, in our system. And on top of it, as I mentioned, an optional layer for uh, more targeted for business users. I'm not going to talk about that today. I'm focusing more on the data layer part today. And uh, so what are these spaces about and how you can use them? I have a little example here where um, you could have a finance space, which is connected, for example, to your S4HANA system or to your ERP system in case you run older versions of our uh, software here might be connected to success factors and then usually a lot of data still sits in Excel somewhere uh, which you can combine here in such a finance space you might have others for sales HR uh, out there and uh, these could communicate to each other if they like to right so you can open up uh, data sharing between these spaces exchange and expose um, certain uh, data models between each other so they could reuse them, combine it with data which sits uh, in the sales area with finance data, etc., and uh, come up with new KPIs and even add more local data sets to it, uh, etc., and extend it in a very flexible way. Um, spaces are not just bound for li like these li uh, line of business usages. You could even have them on a project basis, right? If there's a special project going on where you need something or um, you can really set them up in a flexible way. We also see customers using it uh, on the one hand side more for traditional data warehouse approaches where the IT builds up one or multiple spaces, governs it takes care that the data loading processes and everything uh, is correct and provides that data then uh, for reporting and the line of business get their dedicated areas where they can bring in their own data set, mix everything up and uh, take it from there. So it's a very flexible setup. By default, these spaces are uh, isolated. So they are not exposing data to, to any other space that has to be opened up specifically, and then you can actually exchange these. Um, if we're looking at connectivity, so what kind of systems can we connect? I also group them in various buckets. So on the one hand side, we have SAP applications with like our traditional ones, S4HANA, also the public cloud version, ECC, that's specific connector, but also a generic ABAP connector where you can connect any ABAP-based SAP system. Then, of course, BW, BW4 HANA is available, several cloud solutions. Um, we can connect to various databases or uh, also offer uh, additional generic connections like JDBC connector where you can connect pretty much anything which offers JDBC connectivity out there. As an OData connector, we have secure file transfer protocol if you want to have access to, to FTP servers. 
uh, out there, local file upload, of course, is possible. And then traditional databases, right? Like our own HANA, SQL Server, Oracle, <clears throat> etc. Then hyperscaler, I mentioned it uh, earlier already, right? I don't read all the different connections uh, here, but it's, as I mentioned, uh, the big hyperscalers like Google, Azure, Amazon, and we support various solutions there. <clears throat> Also, as I mentioned, the Open Connectors framework, which you see in the very bottom here uh, on this uh, part, uh, that offers connectivity to, I believe, in the meantime, 160 or more um, cloud solutions, right? So that's a very broad connectivity framework offered there. And last but not least, I also talked about it. Uh, external tooling can be connected. So a lot of people already have ETL tools in place, might it be data services or data intelligence from our side, or also partner solutions like Informatica, Precox, NabLogic, whatever. Uh, we offer <clears throat> connectivity there, that these tools can also connect to Data Warehouse Cloud and write uh, data from, from their uh, pipelines into Data Warehouse Cloud in a seamless way. Last but not least, before I jump into the first part of the demo, um, a quick look at the marketplace. So I mentioned we introduced this uh, feature in January this year, and we already have more than 2,000 data products, more than 100 data providers on the platform right now. And uh, that are all public data products. And looking forward, what we plan to introduce here is also the capability uh, to not just enable this platform for, pri uh, for, for public uh, sharing of data sets, but also for private or internal marketplaces, right? So think about you want to uh, share data within your company, you can um, flag the data as internal and then make it available to your colleagues in other areas. If you don't want to use the data sharing capability and make that uh, data product uh, more internally uh, or easily accessible internally. And also private shares, right? If you think across companies, if you have your network of suppliers, uh, for example, where you want to share data with specific companies, right? Without having that publicly being exposed on the marketplace to everyone else. These kind of uh, uh, offerings is what we are planning to do. So this little disclaimer here that sets on the roadmap right now, but a very interesting use case, of course, to be able to share data with uh, other companies or within your company. So let's have a quick look at the first part of the demo here. Let me stop the presentation for the moment and jump into the system. So I already opened one of our data warehouse cloud systems. Um, this is the home screen basically where you find like with many SAP cloud solutions here on the left hand side on top uh, uh, on the left hand side the menu in general then you find on top more the applications like the uh, data builder for the data modeling and on the bottom here more the administrative tasks like the space management, uh, system settings, etc., transport capabilities. And uh, so if we, on the right hand side, uh, on top, you find your, your profile, you have an application switch there where you can directly connect to your connected sub analytics cloud system. We have various other functions like uh, help uh, which is in there are also uh, an overview of what kind of features came in with the last releases where you find more details about those uh, if you're interested on what we just introduced with one of these uh, latest releases. So let's have a look at the space management real quick. Um, to show you, we go in this area when we want to configure a space, create a new one. And uh, the one I want to show you a little bit is here the connection space, which we've built in our demo system. What you see on this tile here already is that we have 
like 19 connections to this space to various uh, systems out there, uh, 87, uh, 78 models in that, and uh, that it's a healthy space. You see, overall, we have yeah, uh, more than 280 spaces in our system. So that's why I made a pre selection here that you're not confused with all the other spaces. So if you jump in there, <clears throat> we get to the basic settings on top uh, on a space where I could enable like uh, a space quota, meaning I can assign uh, how much disk or how much memory this space could consume, right? So uh, that's where if IT uh, wants to give uh, certain limits to their uh, users on, on these spaces, they can enable the quota. We don't have it on this one. So this is like uh, um, an unlimited space, if you like, limit up to the maximum of the tenant size here. Then we have some workload capabilities. I don't go into details there, where you could have uh, yeah, workload settings uh, for those uh, for this particular space. Then there's a member section where you see a lot of colleagues also being member of this space. And then there is an area of database access. And that's an interesting part here because that's what I'm also using in the second part of the demo. And uh, that's where you can basically create uh, database users to access uh, the system. That's where also, like for example, this one here at Verity Partner Systems, uh, like that Verity ETL tooling can uh, provide data via such a connection. You see here, this is a write enabled connection. This connection is not allowed to read data. Uh, out of data warehouse cloud, but these settings can be made individually for each of these connections. For example, if I'm looking at this one, um, I get the connection details and uh, uh, I can edit the privileges which this connection should have. So uh, I can enable, for example, the predictive libraries can grant access uh, for read or write operations, right? So, um, and that's what I'm using later on. We'll see that in the second part of the demo where I'm using this kind of interface. <clears throat> Another area which might be of interest for some of you who are uh, already familiar with HANA or HANA Cloud modeling uh, is uh, HDI container integration. So the HANA deployment infrastructure containers, they can directly be connected with a space here. So you can create your models uh, in Business Application Studio, for example, and deploy them in the underlying database of HANA, of Data Warehouse Cloud. So in the HANA Cloud system underneath, and then with a simple plus button, we can uh, access those and add them to, uh, to this particular space. I'm not going to do that for now, but this possibility is there. And then at the end, you see here, we can generically uh, define time dimensions. And this has not been done here in this particular uh, area. And we can define connections. So we saw on the tile coming into the space management here that we have already quite a good number. I think 19 it was of connections available for this particular space, you see a quite good mix on various uh, systems like Amazon Redshift, Athena systems, generic OData connect connections, Google BigQuery, HANA systems, more traditional ABAP-based connections like BW systems, etc. Here, and uh, if we click on the Create button, um, you will see uh, there's a variety of systems which we can connect. Currently, we have 31 connection tiles. Um, so meaning these kind of systems can be connected. If you are looking for certain functionalities, you can also filter here with uh, yeah, what kind of connections are available for remote tables, for data flows, etc., for cloud or on-prem, for SAP, non-SAP data, if you move your mouse over the tile, you have also a little information 
button here at the bottom, which shows you the available features uh, for the particular uh, tiles here. So this really varies depending on what kind of systems you want to use. If you, for example, pick um, to connect to a HANA system, so then it's not just a HANA on-prem system, we can also connect to HANA Cloud, depending what you choose here. Um, you are asked for, for different uh, connection details. So with HANA Cloud, we can use remote tables and data flows. Uh, you would give it the host port and uh, user connections, right? So no middleware required there. That's a little different if you want to connect to an on-prem based system. That's where we need to give some more information and also uh, choose like a middleware component, like a cloud connector or DP agent once that's chosen. Um, we also can enable remote tables. So that's how simple this works. Of course, you need the connection details to these systems in order to set it up. But that's basically um, how, this, how this works. So let me leave the screen here. <clears throat> and then let's move back to the presentation and let me show you some more on the modeling side. Oops, already went a little too far. So if we look on the modeling side, um, we uh, have various capabilities here. And as I mentioned at the beginning already, we have federation capabilities, but also capabilities to persist data, like the more traditional approach with data warehouses. So with virtual access, of course, we are accessing data which sits externally in another system. So there's no upfront data movement really required. And uh, the cool feature which we uh, introduce here with Data Warehouse Cloud is that you can switch between both at any point in time. So think about it if you start into a new project, uh, building uh, new KPIs, etc. You can start with virtual access first, get your KPIs right, get your models right. And then at a later point in time, you can switch to persistency and you can persist the data on various layers. You can switch it at the uh, lowest layer where there's a one-to-one -one, uh, connection to like the source tables available. Um, you can do real-time replication or snapshot. Uh, replication there, which you can schedule then in uh, in a regular uh, way, uh, or you can persist the data at higher levels of your model, persist it at uh, at the view level, and uh, also materialize those views using snapshot and scheduling, and schedule those in in, in task chains. So so that is possible. I will show you that switch also later on. In, in the demo, that's a quite easy way of doing that. And the advantage is really your models which sit on top, whatever you modeled on top, that stays uh, completely intact, right? So with that switch back and forth between remote or persisted um, uh, storage of the data, um, your model will not be invalidated, it stays intact. And uh, so that's a really cool feature then. Of course, we have like the traditional uh, data integration capabilities, like a traditional ETL component, if you will, that is called data flow inside of Data Warehouse Cloud. I will not show you that part. The time is just too limited today. Um, but where you have uh, yeah, traditional ETL type of transformation capabilities, uh, also advanced transformation capabilities using Python coding, and as I mentioned before, external tools can be connected. And uh, so that's uh, the options which we have. If we look closer at the modeling, uh, what we offer from within the system, so we have various editors targeted for different user groups or users. Right on the one hand side to the left, we have no code, low code modeling capabilities, but also there is, uh, there are areas where power users, developers can use even their own tooling, um, creating models within Data Warehouse Cloud. 
So what we offer directly built in, and that's what I'm also going to show you, are uh, these graphical or scripted view capabilities here. There's also the business layer, as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm not going to show that part today. And on the other hand, we can also make use of external editors with like the open SQL schema, uh, where you could connect, for example, your SAP database explorer to eight models and uh, SQL DDL DML statements there. And for everyone who's using and familiar with the HANA deployment infrastructures, as I showed you just in the system, these can also be deployed in the underlying HANA cloud database and being used there if you already have ex ex uh, experience there and uh, um, want to deploy these kind of uh, models within Data Warehouse Cloud. Hey, Pete, may I have a quick question sure. here on modeling? Uh, yep. So for those of us coming from BW background, uh, is it following the same kind of like star schema approach once you are modeling? stuff in data warehousing cloud? I can show you that in the system in a minute. Yeah, that's a very good question. So it's probably easier that when I explain it uh, on the model. So I think I have one sure. or two slides more and then we directly jump in there. I show you the model and show you what you can do and how you model those kind of star schema like structures. Yep, let's Thank do you. that. Uh, how you expose data uh, or um, how you report it and make use of it. As I mentioned, Analytics Cloud is the premier um, tool here, what we're using, where we have quite good integration. We also offer from an SAP perspective, uh, Microsoft Office integration. So most of you might definitely know our sub analysis for Microsoft Office um, tool, which is like the desktop uh, version and uh, that is that kind of integration is there I think for a few months now and we already introduced last year with the new Microsoft Office 365 offering so online or desktop versions of uh, Microsoft um, a new sub analytics cloud add-in for Microsoft Office and uh, since I think October last year so it's must be uh, around about a year. We have uh, live connection capabilities with that new plugin uh, provided there. So very good integration on that end. Then third party, as I mentioned at the beginning, we have an API there. And what I will show you later in the demo part is also connectivity to a Jupyter notebook, right? Using machine learning capabilities here directly with Data Warehouse Cloud using that interface. And then last but not least, uh, you mentioned BW, right? So everyone who's coming uh, with a BW background knows the business content, which we had uh, on the BW side. And uh, now we also offer uh, business content uh, packages for Data Warehouse Cloud that is also growing over time, typically on a quarterly basis, we provide more and more of these packages. Um, very quick look here also at the command line interface. That's the API on, let's say, the modeling area on the spaces area that you can create from and via your um, command line interface or using automation tooling here. Uh, spaces, assign members, uh, deploy models, etc. So that's that's everything what you can do here. Put several links here. Um, I'm sure we will provide slides in, in one form or the other. And then uh, the open SQL schema uh, for, for modeling with external tools, right? So that can be used here um, to create such a schema. That's basically the database user I was showing you that creates the schema automatically and the credentials. And then you can use external tools to do modeling here, like for example, um, the Jupyter Notebook. And uh, as we're using um, Data Warehouse Cloud, uh, as, uh, or HANA Cloud as part of Data Warehouse Cloud, sorry. Uh, we have also access to the uh, 
predictive libraries uh, inside of Data Warehouse Cloud. And then of course, expose the models to Analytics Cloud. That's where we can use a variety of toolings. And that's what uh, Andreas Forster showed in more detail in his session uh, a few weeks ago. And I also will show this here together with the Jupyter Notebook in a second. But first, when we go in the system, let's have a look at, uh, uh, at the modeling piece and your question uh, about the star schema. So let me select a different space here. So in this space, I have set up a very simple view, which has uh, two tables providing data to this kind of sales model. Um, let me just quickly. Uh, so what the system is doing now, it's checking while opening uh, this model, if any of the structures underneath this model has changed. And if we need to propagate like updates, if there are additional columns or something like that, uh, we would get a pop-up. So nothing's changed here. Let me close the menu bar so we have some more time. Um, to your question, Vitaly, right? So this is like the output structure of what we are using here. And uh, this is set as a relational data set for the moment. Right, so this is like a flat table structure, if you like. If you're looking uh, for, um, for OLAP functionalities and star schema-like structures, that's happening if you switch to an analytical data set. And uh, if you do that, then you find underneath here, there was a little change. Not sure if everyone got that. i probably switch back to a relational data set where everything is just a column in a flat structure. If we switch to the analytical data set here, we get another section with measures and it directly notifies me that is empty. So I don't have key figures defined here and I can quickly do that. Let's just move for example, um, this one here to, uh, key figures in the model, let's just all move them over there. And then uh, we see what's happening now um, is that we get a star schema like structure being generated under the covers, right? So um, if I wanna have additional master data being assigned to it. So what you know in BW from the info objects where you might have a customer object or product, etc. I could simply associate this in the model here. And then um, let me see if we find this here, we have the product. And this would then generate the, the star schema underneath, right? So it automatically recognizes, okay, there's a product ID in the left table and in the right table and directly uh, joins that. I could also manually uh, create the mapping here, but let's go with what the system proposes me. <clears throat> and I could add various associations, right? And um, if the source tables would already have them, I could also take them over here, copy from the source, so I don't have to manually make those um, uh, associations again and again on, on various layers. But this is basically what you see here, the analytical data set, that's, that's, that's the OLAP representation, right? And uh, if we switch on here, this expose for consumption flag, that's what's exposing this data model then also to sub analytics cloud or to external tools, BI tools, right? That's how you can control what kind of structures are exposed to the outside world for reporting purposes. Um, that's this kind of switch here. 
So um, there's another thing I wanted to show you here on this model, and that's how you can easily mix um, data from various locations. Right, so this one table here, this one source table, this is sitting in Data Warehouse Cloud. It has the data sitting in Data Warehouse Cloud. So we can have a preview also here, showing up here on the bottom. And uh, this other table, as the name says, this is a remote table. So this is remotely accessing data in an external system. And you also see that in the properties panel, right? So this is based on HANA connection. That's the name and the schema of the remote table. And the data access in this case is not remote, it's replicated. I switched that on uh, just before we went into the session here. And you also see the, the data preview also works on, on this sales order remote table. And I want to show you how easy it is to switch back and forth, right? So I go into another area. Don't want to save the changes here. I go into the what we call data integration monitor in Data Warehouse Cloud, where you have an overview on the various uh, um, data operations here with view persistency, data flows, remote queries, etc. We are now on the remote table monitor, and you see this sales order remote table is set to real-time replication. So whenever there's a change on the source data set, an update, a new record, etc., this is replicated in real time to Data Warehouse Cloud. And we can very simply also remove that, right? So if I remove the replicated data, what happens behind the scenes is actually that we switch back from real-time replication to remote access, so it gives me warning because the persisted data is now deleted on this one. And uh, so it takes a moment until this is active. If we go into the details, <clears throat> we will see here 9.47. So it's really now at least that Central European time where we switched back um, here to uh, the replicated data is removed and access is set to remote again, right? So you saw uh, one and a half hours ago, I actually switched on the real-time replication just to have this kind of demo effect here. And if we go back to the model, <clears throat> um, in the editor, we will let's see also see that reflected if we, if we pick the remote table. Again, this is now then really remote access of that external um, data sitting sitting in the HANA cloud system. Okay, everything's fine. If we click on it, now this is changed from real-time replication to remote and I have the very same preview functionality here. So now it's fetching the data from the external system, but in the very same way as we just did it. <clears throat> so I talked quite some time about that machine learning model. And uh, let me just real quick show you what we're doing there. So we basically in that kind of scenario, which also um, Andreas used some weeks ago, we have two spaces which are relevant for this scenario, that's the sub BW bridge space. So the embedded BW, if you like, within uh, sub data warehouse cloud. Dennis in the afternoon will talk more about it. We have data sitting there in a the table called set demand reporting. What we do, we share this with another space called HANA ML bridge. So there's a view pointing to the data sitting in this other space. We expose that to a Jupyter lab, uh, so to a Jupyter notebook using the APL library, the automatic predictive library. We do some forecasting there and then we write the results. So the forecast results back into this HANA ML bridge space. And then we could do uh, a report on top of it, do further modeling, mixing it up with uh, other data we might have in there. But we kept it for the uh, sample uh, here rather simple. And so let's have a look um, in the system. 
how that looks like. I just need to change to the other space that we really see these artifacts. This is the HANA ML bridge space where we see exactly these um, artifacts here. So that's the view providing the data from the other um, uh, space here. And that's the forecast data, which is written physically. So you see that's a local table. Uh, I think what's quite interesting is also have a look at the space settings. Um, I showed you earlier on that other space, how the privileges look like. So now we have enabled this APL uh, flag here. And uh, that's where we can now use with this kind of connection also these libraries within um, Data Warehouse Cloud. And let's just switch over to uh, the notebook, which uh, Andreas uh, provided me what's happening there. So there's some general um, import of the HANA ML version. We get the connection going to um, uh, to, to the data warehouse cloud system. We get the data right from this view, which I showed you on, on the slide and also in the system right now from this particular uh, schema or space, right? Then we need to do in order to uh, work with the algorithms, we need to do some data preparation steps, right? So typically most of you know, that like date formats in SAP are usually varchars, so we need to convert that into timestamps, do that kind, those kind of transformations. <clears throat> then uh, after these kind of data preparation steps, uh, we can create a correlation matrix, train the model, right? And then run the forecast for the next 14 days. And uh, you see that also visualized here, um, on, on this graphic and looking at the time. So I try to speed up a little bit so I don't run um, all the steps live now. That would take probably 10 minutes. And uh, at the end, what we do, since we already ran this a um, couple of times here, we save the predictions in Data Warehouse Cloud again in this table, right? And that's what you also see here when we go to the Data Builder and uh, as I mentioned, this is the table, this local table here, where you actually um, see the data structure. This is just a flat table, so a relational data set, where we're using this open SQL schema, right, on the HANA ML bridge. Um, and if we have a look at the data, you also find the data preview here. Right, so you have access to those uh, predicted values, uh, which we have been generating by the algorithm here. And uh, so let me stop here. And um, maybe one more thing on the slides. If you wanna access to Data Warehouse Cloud, you can get your guided experience uh, system rather quickly. These are the other sessions which uh, we provide here with the topics around Data Warehouse Cloud and the one here highlighted with the gray bar. That's the one from Andreas where he went into more details on the model uh, on how everything works. So feel free to watch it on YouTube. And if you're looking forward to take it next month, right? So we also have a quite good set on various uh, sessions, lectures, breakout sessions, in-person workshops um, on Data Warehouse Cloud, feel free to join us there. And then I would say, let's have a look at the Q&A, Vitaly. Uh, so. Yeah. Uh, so we've got uh, like a few questions. Uh, most of them are technical, but actually the very first one is quite broad and generic okay. uh, from uh, uh, Guru Raja. Uh, we have the same functionalities even in BW for HANA. And if I have BW for HANA system, why business have to move to DWC? What benefits business will get? 
So on the business side, um, so um, with BW, it's typically that the business uses more the front ends to, to uh, operate with the system, right? So using analysis for office, using uh, sub analytics cloud, um, webby or whatever kind of front end visualization tool, but modeling from a business side with NBW, that is typically a hard task. At least that's the feedback what we got over the past 10, 15 years on the BW side. Um, we came up with the workspaces concept, but even that was uh, quite uh, cumbersome and not so easy to learn. These kind of um, easy to use drag and drop kind of um, user interfaces here for modeling. Um, you don't need to uh, know ABAP or any details on, on the uh, ABAP stack, BW, etc. cetera, to, to work with these. These are more generic tools, easy to use. And uh, the good thing is uh, a lot of our customers are looking for cloud-based solutions, meaning this is an offering in the public cloud. And we see a huge trend there that people want to go away from their on-premise systems, uh, don't want to worry about the administration and uh, running the system operations uh, there. So where they're looking for systems which are hosted uh, either in private environments, that's where still BW can play a role, right? We have an offering with the RISE offering also with various hyperscalers where this can play a role, but uh, still the system needs to be operated, maintained, and uh, more and more we see customers using to the public cloud where this goes away, right? Where SAP runs the system for them uh, takes care of the updates, etc. And you, as a customer, uh, focus on the content, right? So on whatever is in the system, on the data, on the models, etc. So that's a, um, a huge benefit with all the other things I've showed you. Sure. Uh, thank you for that. And then the uh, next question of more technical questions. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the question from Luis, uh, is it possible to import Python packages into the Python scripts in Dataflow Data Builder? Uh, additionally, like for example, pandas on NumPy. So pandas and NumPy, they are already there by default. Um, so those are the more classic data integration libraries uh, in, in the Python area, right? So they are there by default, you can directly use them. As we speak right now, uh, there are no additional libraries which you can add, but we're currently working on figuring out ways how we can provide that. Hopefully, maybe next year. It's not officially on the roadmap yet, but we have discussions there how we can leverage more and more these Python capabilities here also. So hopefully, you will see that topic on the, uh, popping up on the roadmap next year. Perfect. Thank you for the answer. Uh, another question from Jacob. Uh, can I use uh, SAP Data Warehouse Cloud for a use case where I would like to store unstructured data logs, like logs JSON format for archive and analysis purposes? Yeah, so JSON is supported, right, as, a, as an input, as a file structure, um, using the data flow functionality. So we use or offer a variety of formats there. JSON is one, but also like Parquet files, which are quite common in, in, in the data lake, or uh, uh, formerly the um, Hadoop community, right? So we use or offer um, ways for, for, for these kind of uh, processing as well as the, the consumption of, of those uh, data files from typically data lakes or wherever you might have it. Mm -hmm. Uh, another question from Luis, even though I think it is quite broad, but let us try. Mm -hmm. uh, which is the best way to consume hierarchies from consumption model and perspective? Consumption model and perspective. So those are for, for the people not familiar with these terms, consumption model and perspective. That's part of the business layer in Data Warehouse Cloud, the area which I was not going into uh, today. And uh, hierarchies, uh, as of now, um, are limited. So we offer hierarchies in general uh, within the data layer. 
uh, and, and also in the business layer, I believe, in the meantime. But if you really compare it, uh, for example, with the very, very rich hierarchy capabilities from BW, we're not there yet, honestly speaking. We still need to invest in these areas. And uh, so uh, I cannot tell you exactly with the usage on the consumption model right now. I would need to look it up, to be honest. Okay. Thank you, KP. And uh, continuing on the topic of probably comparison to mm -hmm. uh, BW, Luis is asking uh, another question. Like yeah. a process chain in SAP BW, is it possible uh, to receive notifications by mail in case of a job scheduling failure? Yeah, so that question is, as far as I understand it, more related to BW than Data Warehouse Cloud. And I believe email notification, that that's there for quite some time now. Um, mm -hmm. So that that should be possible. You would need to set it up um, in the back end. I'm not sure on all the transactions there, but I'm sure there's a blog uh -huh. out there this, describing that on the BW side. Uh, but the question was, is it possible to do in data warehousing cloud similarly to BW oh, where uh, you okay. see these email notifications? Okay, uh, no, not not yet, not yet. Okay, uh, and another question uh, from Phil. This uh, ML demo is very cool. Will you provide the notebooks and training data in the repository for download? Uh, I, in this case, I would suggest Phil to uh, watch the recording, uh, the complete recording of Andreas' session. And, exactly, uh, that's, that, that that's, that's this started. session here. And um, I think he, he shared it uh, somewhere. Um, I'm not sure. Yes, I, I, I think it's too that uh, Andreas yeah. Yeah. Uh, shared it. And uh, then another question. I, I will post the link in a second okay. uh, as well to Andreas session in the chat. Uh, the question from Didier. Uh, do you need to activate something special to be able to take advantage of the spatial engine in SAP HANA database underlying data warehousing cloud? Yeah, very good question, Didier. So in general, for activating these libraries in Data Warehouse Cloud, this is a, a, a ticket-based process. So I mentioned earlier, it's a software as a service solution. So uh, in case of a customer, you're not the administrator of the database that is SAP in that sense. And uh, um, open a ticket, um, we have an OSS node out there which describes the process and the details you need. You need your uh, URL and a few other details and then um, we will activate that for you. Once it's activated, it's available in all the spaces automatically. And then you can, as I just showed you in the pop-up on the connections, you can decide if you want to enable that for certain connections or not. Okay, thank you for that. And uh, let us take the last question because mm -hmm. we are already slightly uh, over the time. Uh, the question from Guru. Yeah, and uh, Andreas just, just posted the note, <laughs> which I was talking about. So the number is out there. Great. Thank you, Andreas. Andreas, and maybe you can uh, share once again, if you are uh, watching and listening, uh, uh, the link for field to the repository uh, of the notebooks and training data uh, for the demo. So... Uh, Last question from Guru Raj, as I mentioned, if we go to SAP Data Warehouse Cloud, then is BW for HANA still required? Mm -hmm. That's also a very good question. Um, definitely in the afternoon session, we will have more about that topic from, from Dennis. But in general terms, right? So we offer the so-called BW Bridge as an ABAP stack as part of Data Warehouse Cloud. So you could use that, move your already created models and your investment, which you obviously did in, in um, BW for HANA and move those models to the BW bridge. Then you have that in SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. And then if you've done that migration or conversion as it's officially called, um, then you could switch off uh, your BW for HANA. That's the quick answer, right? 
in reality, like we all know, uh, it comes down to details. It comes down probably to functionality, depending on what you use also in BW for HANA, if that functionality can be directly replaced with something we have in Data Warehouse Cloud. If you think in terms of planning, for example, a lot of customers are using planning on BW or BW for HANA. And uh, uh, that is currently not directly available in Data Warehouse Cloud. Um, that is happening in Sub Analytics Cloud on the planning side there. So these kind of things need to be thought about, but in general, you could do that, yes. Perfect. And as I mentioned, uh, uh, this was the last uh, question that we take. If there are any more questions to this session, then uh, please go to the session page and post your uh, questions there as comments. And I will make sure uh, that uh, KP answers them <laughs> there. Uh, with that, uh, KP, thank you so much for your time, for uh, sharing your valuable insights into Data Warehouse Cloud, for uh, showing the demos, uh, for answering questions, and I wish you and everyone watching this session a great day. Take care. Thanks, Vitaly, for having me. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. It was a pleasure.